Welcome to Galfe Pride Radio. Uh, this is the after Dragon Con uh, episode, which unfortunately I did not record anything at Dragon Con because it was really, really busy. 13 hours of programming pretty much sucks away all your free time. But I am one of your hosts, Davey Beauchamp, and to the right of me, or sorry, left of me, is Clayton Wick. Hi, I'm on Vicodin. He is on Vicodin. Um, so this so this episode um, is going to be short and sweet because we're going to be dealing with the Dahlhaas episode, The Girl Who Waited, and sort of a post-Dragon Con report because I did see some really cool things that are Doctor Who related. So we'll start with The Dollhouse. Um, what did you... We'll start with what we didn't like about the episode. I thought that it seemed sort of aimless for about the first half. I think that they were working so hard in building up the mystery of what was going on that there really wasn't any sort of hook there to keep you watching. But once you hit the second half and find out what's actually going on, I think it's one of the... Uh, I think it's one of the better episodes of the season, actually. Really? Yeah. Wow. I, well, it's just the dynamic between the Doctor and Alex and George yeah. really reminded me of some of the stuff that happened in The Watcher. Ah, the, that was a great episode. Uh, for me, I thought the, the weak part of this was, is the storyline didn't go forward anyway, in any sense of the imagination. I mean, other than the last, like, ten seconds when they do the little song about the Doctor dying, um, I thought it was an okay uh, Monster of the Week episode. Uh, but don't get me wrong. Doctor Who at its worst is some shows at its best. So even though I'm saying that this is one of my favorite episodes, it's better than a lot of other stuff that's out there right now. Honestly, I'm just a really big fan of any time that they do anything that alludes to the Doctor as a parent. And I think that's a lot of what they did in this episode. Yeah, I can see that. I just... I just saw everything coming. I, there, there was no surprise for me. Um, and I think that's a real problem when they keep crutching on the um, perception filters and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. I mean, I would really like... It could have been explained so much easier. Psychic ability or just anything. Just a pheromone that the kid puts off, the alien puts off. Why, does it, why do they always have to fall to perception filter? I mean, I would like a little little variety there. I mean, I think they yeah. beat that one to death. It seemed a little bit easier to explain. I mean, it's basically the cornfield episode of the Twilight Zone, only the kid doesn't realize what he's doing. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, and that's a great episode of the Twilight Zone. And, yeah, that's that's a really good point. I could definitely feel, now that you mention it, it definitely feels like that, that, that sort of episode. Um, huh... So, um, anything else you really want? I mean, there's not a lot to talk about this episode, because it didn't really move the story forward. There was some, you know, character development. I mean, we did get, we did get to see Doctor Who and Optimus Prime on, on the screen at the same time. Um, that was one of the toys. I, I just love, uh, I love Rory in this episode. See, I thought they, re I thought they, you know, I thought he, to me, Rory felt like season, last season Rory. He didn't seem as strong or as confident or as badass as he's been as he's been acting. It seems like he took a step back in this episode. I don't really think it's that. I think it's more... I've always gotten the impression that Rory is... He sort of uses Amy as a crutch. When Amy is around, he generally relies on her to solve problems. Because that's the way their relationship is defined. Mm, I can see that. Then any time he's on his own, that's when you really see the really great glory moments where he's forced yeah. to come into his own. Well, I mean, when he's the plastic centurion all over again. Yeah. With that some years of experience. But I did love that uh, when the uh, when the elevator collapses, and then they're standing there in the dark, and Rory's first instinct is, "Oh, great, we're dead again." <laughs> Yeah, because I mean, that that's how he defines his time with the doctor, number of times dead. Yeah, which you probably do too if you had his track record. Yeah, I mean he has died more than any other companion, and has come back more than any other companion, uh, thus far. But yeah, I, I just think it was interesting the way that it fed into the existing dynamic, the little bit of a. I like whenever it is that Rory is just there, really. He's yeah. just 
probably my favorite companion. He he is a phenomenal companion. I mean, I can't say enough. I mean, he's had real character development. He is a lot of fun to watch. Um, he's the most realistic person I think they've ever had on the TARDIS. Yeah. And we also found out what the Doctor's one weakness is. Rubik's Cubes. Yeah. So if you ever wanted to defeat the Doctor, just give him a Rubik's Cube. He can't solve it. So put that Doomsday button in there. He would never be able to stop it. Maybe the, or maybe someone just put the stickers on that one wrong. That is true. <laughs> that would be really funny if, that, if that's all it takes to defeat the Doctor. Because he said it was broken. It might have been. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, yeah, I, 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 <clears throat> this Doctor, to me, is definitely more childlike than any of the other Doctors we've had in a long time. Um, aww. And there's another one of our co-hosts. I'm not sure if you can see him, but that's Blue the Kitty. Um, he's being very, very affectionate tonight. Um, so, anything else about this episode that you want to sort of discuss before we move on to I The Girl Who Waited? I just think it's a really solid filler episode and I think that if out of all of the episodes this season I think it would actually be one of the best to show someone who was getting who was new to Doctor Who. Yeah. It doesn't rely too much on any of the existing backstory. No, yeah, I mean it's a great entry one and I gotta say and I'm probably gonna be paying for this, I actually preferred this one over uh Let's Kill Hitler. No, I'd agree with that. Yeah. I just it's just me. I, I just thought Let's Kill Hitler could have been a much, much better episode. Um, and I don't, I don't think they should have, that should have been the cliffhanger or something or mid season, you know, break because I don't know. It just, it didn't feel like let's get back into Dr. Who. It seemed more like, I, I don't know. It could have been a much better, more better episode. It felt like an episode you show in the middle of an arc. Yeah. Which it kind of is. Yeah. But it's not, it seems weirdly placed for Something that's supposed to hook people back in after yeah. this season. Break. I mean, I'm, I'm willing to admit that if I watch the entire season, it probably wouldn't feel out of place, or it, or as it does right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would have liked to have seen either The Girl Who Waited or The Dollhouse episode, which, in fact, a lot of people thought was the Neil Gaiman episode because of Neil Gaiman's affinity for creepy little things, um, just like it was running Sandman, um, then Let's Go Hitler. Um, but I, but I think it's all. It, I it, think it I, sort of reuses a vaguely similar plot, the whole cuckoo thing, yeah. from uh, one of the uh, later Sandman arcs. Yeah, it's it's just the very vague premise. But I could see how someone would get the idea that it might just be a game and retreading an old idea. Yeah, and I'm really glad it wasn't. Yeah, because uh, his episode was phenomenal. Um, so, let's move on to um, The Girl Who Waited. Which I think thus far is the best episode of this half of the season. I, when I watched it the first time, I was in tears. Um, there were just some really tender moments between Rory and uh, old Amy that just, just ripped me a new one. Yeah, I mean, it, it was just... It was heart-wrenching. I mean, I can't think of anything bad about this episode for me. I mean... But that's just me. I really, really enjoyed this episode, and I'm glad it followed up um, the Dahas episode. Yeah, I, I really think that this episode had probably some of the best Amy moments and some of the best Rory moments yeah. I have seen thus far. And uh, the Doctor was just... The villain. He was at his absolute worst in this episode. Yeah. I mean, he he was... I mean, he was a monster in this episode. I mean, it, it all fell back to a rule one when it comes to the Doctor. The Doctor lies. Yeah. And honestly, I could not believe he actually lied on this scale this time. Um, he lied to Amy. He lied to Rory. And he did all of this so he could kill Amy. Yeah. And I mean... There better be repercussions. I mean, I feel like there are repercussions because yeah. whatever trust Rory had with the Doctor, it's gone. What really surprised me about this episode is that I've always gotten the impression that Amy is one of his favorites. 
that out of all of the companions, she was the one that she was one of the ones at least that he loved and trusted the most. Yeah, I mean, and this is just an outright betrayal of her trust in him. And I think it, it also goes to show that you know, in a sense, that the doctor knows or may feel like humans are pets. You know, they're not going to be around forever. And yeah, this is the first one he's really known since she was a child all the way through now. Um, but yeah, I mean, he treated them very, I mean, he was horrible to them. I think the worst thing for me is that the older Amy, when she's locked out of the TARDIS, she's not really surprised. No. No. It, she, I mean, she wasn't. And I mean, though, of course, she also hated the man at this point. Yeah. Um, and the person that she truly loved... And I think this pretty much settles it from here on out. We don't really need to question this anymore, that Amy truly loves Roy. There is no love in her heart, or at least romantically, to the Doctor anymore. And oh, I mean, this yeah. episode totally, totally proves it, without a shadow of a doubt. Because even young Amy, you know, she shared some memories of Roy as well. That pretty much says that, yeah, I mean, we don't need to touch on this. Who is Amy truly in love with, the Doctor or Rory? I mean, I think it's settled after this episode. And if they bring it back up, they're just rehashing stuff they don't need to rehash anymore. I, th I think it's it's done, it's put away, let's put it on the bookshelf and forget about it now. There's, I think this episode goes to show a little bit more that Rory is probably one of the most badass companions ever. <laughs> yes. I, I mean, there have been companions who have stood up to the Doctor yeah. before, but none of them have ever said, you're not going to turn me into you. Yeah, I know. I mean, when he's, I mean, when he said, you're making me into you, I mean, that was a pretty harsh line. Yeah. I mean, that was just like... Um, just a fuck you moment. I mean, it was just like, and as watching it, I mean, it made me feel that the doctor is a monster at times, mm -hmm. which I mean, he's always had a dark side. Cause I mean, I always theorize, this is my own personal theory that the master and the doctor could actually be the same individual, but we're not sure which one came first though. Davy sort of, you know, negated my, my theory, but I mean, this episode sh really showed the Doctor has a really dark side, which they also sort of hinted at during Summer Summer Coy's run, that there was something more to the Doctor than we might ever know. But of course, this is also the same man that killed his entire race. I mean, I could easily see, you know, now thinking back about it, I mean, this is just one person. I mean, what's one person compared to an entire species that he's wiped out? This is someone who trusted him, though. Yeah, I, I mean, and that's what me. Well, I mean, if you look at, at some of the time wars he might have wiped out, he might have wiped out Ramona. And, yeah. I mean, she trusted him time and time again. Or some of the other time wars that he was really good friends with. I mean, there, there was trust there that he just got rid of. And, and this is, I hate to say it, his own race of people that he, you know, destroyed. But, yeah, no, I mean, this, this really showed a really dark side of the Doctor. To be fair, though, the humans are his race, too. No, they're not. <laughs> no, they're not. <laughs> I hate you right now, Clayton. I hate you. But I gotta, I gotta give you points for that one. But, yeah, I mean... Which, I mean... I really cannot wait to see how this episode fits into the rest of the season. Because I think there are going to be repercussions. Yeah, my belief right now is that Rory is the one in the space suit. <laughs> that Rory is the one who kills the Doctor. Yeah, There's but... going to come a certain point where River and Amy are going to know they have to sort out the timeline, they need to keep things right. Somebody needs to kill the Doctor. And while they're both arguing over how it's something they have to do but they can't do, Rory is just going to step up and go, he has it coming, I'll do it. Yeah, yeah I mean, I don't think it would take much, much more at this point for Rory, you know, to death the Doctor. No. I mean, and I, I'm really curious about at one point, at what point there is going to be physical violence from Rory onto the Doctor, because that is now a real powder keg of 
that's getting ready to explode. And I'm really curious to see how that's going to play out. Because um, I don't think Moffat would have such a story in his, in his arc unless there are going to be repercussions. Um, and even with the, uh, the dollhouse, you know, it wouldn't surprise me maybe later on we see the kid in puberty yeah. in a season or two. Because, I mean, I never thought we'd see the space pirates again. And what happens? We see the space pirates again. I kind of think that the kid is just sort of Moffat going, hey, this is kind of a cool episode idea. Whoever follows up after me should probably revisit it when the kid is older. Yeah, which would be great. I think it would be a lot of fun to see an episode like that. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, no, I think this is probably, I think the girl who waited, which mimics, you know, the boy who waited. Um... And I'll let Clayton talk for a second while I figure out who's calling me in case it's an emergency. So, uh, yeah. Hello. Sort of yeah. weird just sort of being left alone here to talk. Oh, cool, cool. Yeah, totally. Not having much of a, in the way of a subject. Okay. So, um, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of a throat abscess, but there are times when it swells up enough that the only way that the doctor can take care of it is to shove a needle down your throat and drain your tonsils. I have never seen more of my own blood than I did three weeks ago. Ouch. So yeah, now it's back to Doctor Who. <laughs> yes. Um, do you have anything else you want to say about the girl who waited? Just, it's, it might be my favorite episode of the season. Yeah, I agree with you. It's right there, up there with me. And now, we're going to talk about a little bit of Dragon Con. Oh, and, and it, well, now we have also, a, a, we just have a special guest that just popped in, um, who's who's running away with one of my cats, um, Angela, who you've seen, seen in other episodes. But we're going to talk a little bit about Dragon Con, because I saw some really, really cool things there. But first, I'm going to talk about Sebastian McCoy. This is my Sylvester McCoy action figure from the original run, um, who signed it for me. Really, really nice guy. Um, and just as, as nice as can be. But yeah, he signed it. He was thought it was really cool to see one of the original action figures from back in the day, because I was the only person that had one of these at Dragon Con. Because um, I got this when I first went over to England, and I was like, I gotta bring something Doctor Who back. And this is what I brought back. But the other cool thing I saw... Um, uh, it's a company called QMXOnline.com. Um, they're actually licensed to produce the sonic screwdrivers, prop, uh, prop accurate sonic screwdrivers, made out of real metal and stuff like that. Um, I got a chance to actually hold the hold the props or the replicas. They were phenomenal. Um, right now they have, and these were just the prototypes. They haven't been approved yet by the BBC. That's why they couldn't give me a time of when they were going to be released or a price yet, because the BBC still had to sign off on them. But they had made the Doctor Screwdriver, both uh, Tenants and Smiths, uh, Rivers, and the Master's Laser Screwdriver, and they were just, just a phenomenal quality. I mean, I cannot wait to actually buy these things, spend a small fortune, and hang them on a wall or something. I don't know, but. I'm I'm really looking forward to the release of the of these screwdrivers. I just wish Clayton could have been there with me uh, because it would have been awesome having another person. Because from what I found out, we actually have some fans that actually showed up at Dragon Con. Um, I'm as shocked as you guys. Are. Yes, <laughs> who I got a chance to meet and stuff like that uh, during my 13 hours of programming. Um, I did unfortunately miss the uh, episode they showed at Dragon Con, which was an episode that hadn't been shown yet. I did hear that Matt Smith actually had a video introduction to that episode where he said hello and thanked everybody at Dragon Con for supporting the show and stuff like that. Um, and that's pretty much all I did at Dragon Con was my programming. Um, do you have anything you want to add about any of these two episodes or Dragon Con or anything like that? Or about your throat abscess? Uh, throat abscess, no. Dragon Con seems like it would be nice to go to sometime. It would be awesome. Maybe. You would have a lot of fun. But there's so many people. It's so crowded. And it's only getting bigger. It's three times bigger than the largest convention I've ever been to. At least. At least, yeah. Probably four or five times bigger. Yeah. Yeah, you're talking about, I think, 50,000, 60,000 people. Wait, spanning, like, really? four or five hotels, yeah. Okay. About 12 times bigger than the biggest convention <laughs> yeah. I've ever been to. Yes. For some reason, I was thinking it was 13,000. No! Maybe and it's one hotel. Yeah. 
Wow, okay. Yeah. Never mind, I feel dumb. Oh, don't. I mean, people don't understand the the size of this thing unless they go. I'm going to blame the Vicodin. Oh, totally blame the Vicodin. Um, so, oh, oh, and you might wonder why um, Lacey is not here tonight. Um, she basically was had a snogging orgy. Wait, and, I know who Lacey is. Oh, sex. You know, our, our Asian friend. Um, yeah, she was in a snogging orgy and caught um, some sort of foul disease uh, reminiscent of Concrud. So that is why she's not with us tonight. So, um, so all you Lacey fans out there, sex fans, she's not here tonight, but hopefully she'll be back next week if she's not diseased. Did you just say sex fans? <laughs> yeah, I did, didn't I? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Okay, um, if you don't have anything else, I don't have anything else. Um, this is Gallifrey Pirate Radio signing off, and until next, until next week.